Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and uh, distinguished gentlemen and ladies on the stage and off stage. Uh, fortunately enough, Dr. Ishita Ganguly has spoken about the MSN is good for me. So I won't have to give any introduction about the MSN is good. Of course, that was not even required in this August audience, but still Dr. Ishita has helped me a lot in the sense that I can cut out some portion of what I wanted to say. In spite of uh, the importance of the MSN is that in fact we are really living in trying times but also exciting times. The micro, small and medium enterprises are coming up in a very big way as Dr. Bhagna also has pointed out and Dr. Ishita has proven in statistics. But still the MSME sector is in many countries of the world, not only in India, is deficient in one culture. Our MSMEs in general have uh, a bent of, uh, what should I say, trait or tendency, not trait, but bent of uh, mind, I should say, towards the manufacturing sector. The services sector we are ignoring. In fact, not only in this country, in many of the countries of the world, except for the developed countries. The history of economics is very clear. The history of economic growth is very clear. As someone before me, Dr. Prem Singh, uh, 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 Professor Prem Singh, I think, he has already pointed out, and it is known to many people that after agriculture, uh, we come to industrial phase of an economy and then we come to the services sector. But in the services sector, and India has already achieved more than 50% of national income in uh, from services sector. It is 53.9 sector if I'm not uh, 53.9 percent if I'm not mistaken. I will give you just some statistics about the importance of the services sector. Even in India, I mean in the context of India particularly and in the context of the international scenario. According to the Economic Survey 2022-23, India has been a major player in services trade, being among the top 10 services exporting countries in 2021, having increased its sale in world commercial services exports from 3% in 2015 to 4% in 2021. Uh, some of the dominant sectors in the services sectors are IT BPM, e-commerce market, digital financial services, tourism. IT BPM uh, revenues registered year-on-year -year growth of 15.5% during FY22 compared to 2.1% growth in FY21. It's a massive jump. Within the IT BPM sector, IT services constitute the majority share, but at the 51%. India's e-commerce market is also growing and it is projected to post impressive gains and grow at 18% annually through 2025. I mean, till Under digital financial services, India took the lead in the fintech adoption rate of 87%. Substantially higher than the world average of 64% as per the latest global fintech Apple adoption index. The survey stated that new banks have eased availability and provided access to financial services to MSMEs and online bank customers and areas. Uh, in fact, even in our corporate sector, as many as 9,73,237 companies are active under the head of services, which means 64% of total companies active in India. Uh, and many of them uh, are also having international presence. There are almost three core MSMEs, out of which uh, uh, we have Uddham, except for Uddham Assist Platform, which is a special category. We have more than two crores of uh, MSMEs, and out of that, 73% are 
are in the services sector. Of course, here we have both services proper and the retail trade. If I am mistaken, Dr. Ganguly can correct me uh, if I am wrong. Globally, the services are how much uh, are uh, services important as far as the global scenario is concerned? I am not talking about only the developed countries, I am talking about the global scenario as a whole. According to a study by WTO and World Bank, services account for 50% of global trade in value added terms. Share of global GDP was 67%, which is more than agriculture and industry combined. By 2021, 50% of the world's workforce was employed in the services sector. I am just, just giving you only some of the uh, important economic assets. Socially speaking, there are two other important factors that I, there are two other important facts that I would like to mention. Services in a positive gender dimension and play an important role in women's empowerment. In 2021, 59% of employed women globally work in the services sector compared to only 44% in 2000. Across a range of economies, the services sector accounted for 45% of youth employment in 2001. But unfortunately, the services sector, I am not going into any more data because we do not have much time. But unfortunately, the services sector, as Dr. Ganguly has pointed out, the MSMEs have main issues, three, the, the problems of MSMEs can be categorized into three broad categories. One is access to credit. Another is access to technology and the third is access to market. In the case of the services sector, actually access to market is mostly through their e-footprints. And here, actually they do not need much of the government help, much of the government assistance or facilitation as we do in the product marketing. In the case of technology also, I mean, uh, it is uh, intricately intertwined with the market phenomenon. So in the technology also, the services sector, yes, they need more and more technological access uh, for their growth. And there, even if they are conversant with the basic technology, but we need to help them with much higher technological assistance because they do not have the wherewithals to do the research and development uh, on their own. The great and uh, the greatest gap and I should say it is an interesting problem of mindset. I was in a meeting, I am not giving you the details because I cannot do so. Not that it is a secret meeting or anything, but at the same time I should not disclose because I am a government officer, I am a um, uh, government servant. A uh, few uh, days back, few weeks back, I was in a meeting with the DEA where one of the international organizations and the government of India representatives were talking about the scenario of India. And I am an international organization, international financial organizations, and uh, they were talking about low a uh, very high amount of unsecured loans in India, in uh, India's credit portfolio. Someone from the government side, this is a very senior officer, he objected to it. He said, how can you say it? When you are on the one hand encouraging digital, digitalization of credit system, banking system and fintech, how can you talk about the, how can you object to unsecured loans totally? The credit cards are unsecured loans. They may be unsecured, but they are not insecure. Because the, they, they are, these loans are given as you know, many of you very well, uh, many of you know very well, that these are not the income, based on the income stream, future income stream, expected income stream. So, fintech and digital approach to credit should get into this credit market more and more with such loans because only these loans can help the services sector. The services sector do not get any credit because they do not have anything to mortgage, they do not have machinery, they do not have land. Whereas the services 
agriculture sector is the sector of the future. Already in most of the developed countries, they are in the services sector uh, is generating somewhere from 80% to 90% of the national income. But the MSMEs are absolutely, uh, the services sector MSMEs, they do not have much schemes for them, for them except for one or two, uh, some, uh, one very important credit scheme, CGTMAC. But otherwise, they do not have any other scheme probably so far. And in other countries also, this gap is almost unbridgeable because of the philosophy of banking that we follow since last 200 years. It is, it is not an academic uh, comment or it is not a very solid comment, but I must say, if one sector needs reforms, if one say globally, if one sector has not progressed much in 200 years in terms of philosophy, that's banking. Banking industrial revolution, at the time of the industrial revolution, the banking system was generated and uh, was uh, um, formalized that you need machinery and land as mortgage for advancing loans. We are still following that. When a 70 to 80 percent of our economy is controlled by the, I mean, is uh, generated, being generated from the services sector. I think I have given you a brief uh, uh, description of the problem. I have some beautiful OECD recommendations for growth in services sector, not much, only three. And they are very important. Adapt innovation policies to the growing importance of service innovation. Innovation policies remain ill-adapted to the, it is not me, it is the OECD that is saying this. Innovation policies remain ill-adapted to the growing importance of innovation in services and to the new potential for products and process innovation that is due for information and communication technology, due to information and communication technology. Adapt education and training policies to rapidly change the requirements for new skills. Skills, uh, I work on skill also, by the way, and skills are changing. The skill ecosystem is changing like anything. We are not understanding that most of the skills taught today will be absolutely irrelevant within 10 years, and at least 50% of them will be really irrelevant in another 5 years. It is not the time when a technology reigns in the market for 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. Those days are gone. It is only 5 to 10 years. So adapting education and training policies to rapidly change the requirements for new skills is an absolute necessity uh, in, uh, in the present days. Uh, since most services involve direct contact with customers, human resources are key to services sector performance. There, if you cannot skill, if you do not skill people, especially in soft skills, in India, I can understand, I have, with my experience in skill, I can say soft skills is an area, except in tourism or uh, uh, other, some such services, soft skills are not given any importance in Indian scenario. That is a must if we want to uh, grow in the service sector. And last, remove impediments that prevent services, services sector firms from seizing the benefits of ICT. To seize the benefits of ICT for services, government should continue to encourage effective competition in ICT infrastructure, network services and applications, notably for broadband. In fact, I must say that the government probably will have to think of introducing blockchain technology for developing MSME markets. Especially because in the blockchain technology, both services and manufacturing can be integrated. Gati Shakti is an example. Uh, even though I am not very much aware of how Gati Shakti uh, programs, how Gati Shakti uh, um, is progressing and how they are planning to include, uh, include uh, MSME. But this is probably an important area which we need to look into. Thank you. If there is any question, Thank you very much, sir. And uh,
I would request Dr. G. R. Raghavendra, although his session is in the next, after this session in the panel, that he has arrived and I would request his senior consultant, IPR with the CIFAM. He was the Joint Secretary of the Department of Promo, uh, Promotion of Indian Trade and uh, Industrial Trade, in, uh, Promotion of Industrial Trade. I would request uh, Dr. G. R. Raghavendra to kindly come on the dial screen. And I would also request Mr. Anadi and Sina, President, Corporate Affairs, Uno Minda Group. So kindly come. Now it's your time. You cannot avoid now. You will have to come and you have to speak. Very soon after this, uh, you know, one deliberation by Mr. Sinha, we will be having a you know much awaited award function. Uh, first session of this award function. Many of the senior people who are sitting on the dais, especially the ambassador of uh, Mongolia, His Excellency Mr. Dampajo, he will be there. His session is in the directory session. Several other uh, speakers are also there Mr. Samar Mahapatra, Mr. Vinod Tripathi, and uh, Mr. Vinay Suri. In the house, Dr. Parminder is sitting, Professor Urmila Sharma is sitting, she is from the SGD University and uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Tyagi, she is also sitting here from the CIDC. Now over to Mr. Anadi and Sinha, a big round of applause for Mr. Anadi and Sinha, President Corporate, Corporate Affairs, Runa Mindaro.
best part I can foresee to post this G20 summit, uh, we received a lot of inquiries and the meeting requests from the different G20 countries for developing the trade relationship, developing the joint venture partnership and every week at least one or two requests we are receiving across the G20 countries members for coming up in India, for setting up their ventures in India, are discussing with the future partnership with the Indian partners, which is one of the partners we are also looking for many countries and being a global presence, we look for across the globe uh, partnership. So these were the few uh, inputs which I could foresee during this G20 summit and post G20 summit, the reflections in auto component industry. And we hope that this uh, impact of G20 will ease out our business relationship with many countries and supply chain issues for, for this and the growth and development of the net utility and carbon zero footprint for the country. Thank you very much. The speakers to join us here today, address us and uh, of course uh, for your, all your notable speech, it was surely a pleasure to hear all of you. Right, Mr. Pandey? And I was requesting Dr. G. R. Arvindra to so kindly come on this stage, please. A big round of applause for Dr. G. R. Arvind. Also, Mr. B. N. Saha is here. His session is in the after this session, but I would request him to kindly come on this dais. He is the DGM with Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited. One of the number one PSUs in India in heavy electrical engineering. And now I would invite Mr. Abhishek Dubey, Mr. Ashutosh and Mr. Ashish for uh, award, round of awards and felicitation to our guests also, please. Award is 
Sir, kindly join us on stage from iTech Solutions Private Limited. A round of applause for our group winners. Uh, uh, our recognition 
and ceremony as we would like to invite one more new guest on the stage on the dais. Let's have Mr. Omkareshwar Pandeji announcing our new guest making his way to the dais. I would request uh, the other guests to kindly take their seats. Um, I would uh, like to invite Mr. Sandeep Chatterjee, Dr. Sandeep Chatterjee, Senior Director, Ministry of Information Technology, to kindly come. He is the Senior Director and Group Coordinator, Cyber Law and Data Governance, Head of Division e waste and Circular Economy, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So, Aapke Haat Se Puch Award. It's a pleasure to have you sir and let's continue with the award ceremony as we are so excited to have other winners on stage and the next category is of iconic brand of the year for staffing and recruitment solutions 2023 and the award goes to Yogana Tulsiani, director and co-founder of RXC Solutions. It's Yogana Tulsiani. Thank you. 
Many, many congratulations, Mr. Durgesh Rai. Miss Neha, yes. to give little more attraction to our already glorious stage, star -star I would stage. request another star to please come on Lovely. and join our uh, list of dignitaries because it's not all about taking the awards, it's all about giving the awards. Absolutely. So, Pyaar Lena or Pyaar Dena, Duno hi itna hi important hai. London se chal ke aayin hai, Yogita Tulisya ni. She has already received her award. I would like to invite her to join our luminary from the gate in the dais. She is the director and co-founder IXC Solutions, London. She is mainly into the staffing and recruitment. Thank you. It's not a lovely. Yeah, please go ahead. Man. Going forward, the next category is of the most acclaimed construction chemicals provider to watch out for. And I would like to invite the winner on stage who is Mr. Sanjay Arora, Managing Director of ADO Additives Technologies. Limited. Let's have Mr. Sanjay Lora on the stage to see where they go. A round of applause for our winners. The next category is of Business Excellence Award for Tour and Travel Services Provider. Very important. The winner is Mr. Suvik Dev, Director of the Trip Company, a unit of TTC Hospitality Private Limited. Let's have and let's hear it for Mr. Suvik Dev. Can you join us on stage? From assisting travelers in planning itineraries to facilitate booking flights, accommodations, transportation, tours, and other travel services, the Trip Company has been making travel enjoyable and happy free for its clients over the years. Next category is of Top Aluminium Extrusion Manufacturer 2023. And I would like to request Mr. Anil Agarwal, Managing Director of Global Aluminium Private Limited to make his way on the stage to collect his award. From our prestigious dignitaries, chief guest and guest on the dais. Next category is of Emerging Assurance Initiator in Dental and Dermat Health Sector. And the award goes to the very elegant Chani Gandhi, Director and Founder of IDD Assurance. And I would request Professor Avinash Pandeji, Dr. Raghavendra and Dr. Sandeep Chatterjee to kindly jointly uh, give the award to her. They have left a remarkable mark in the healthcare industry. And they truly, truly deserve it. Next category is of the most acclaimed co-working space provider of 2023. And the winner is Manas Beherotra, Founder and Managing Director of 315 Work Avenue. And I would request His Excellency Ambassador Dambajo, uh, Mr. B. N. Saha, DGM uh, Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, and Mr. Samar Mahapatra to kindly jointly give this award to the next awardee. This was only the announcement as we didn't have the winner here among us. So the next category, like to Announced will be for highly regarded post harvest services provider, and the winners are Santosh Kumar Sahu, who is the co founder and CEO, God Singh, Zono Business Head, Abhisha Kumari, Zono Key Account Manager. Can we please have you all on stage? Go Green Warehouses Private Limited. 
Limited is a highly promising player in offering services and solutions related to the handling, processing and storage of agricultural produce after it has been harvested. Hence, it is the title highly regarded post-harvest services provider of 2023. Many congratulations. Without any further delay, I'd like to announce the winner for the most admirable investment product provider of the year 2023 and the award goes to Kamruddin Jalaldi, CEO of G Multi Trading and Services. Can we please have you on the stage? And I would request all the ladies from the dais to kindly join join and to give this award. Professor Urmila Sharma, Dr. Paranjit, Yogita Tulisyani, and Ms. Karima Tiyagi, join please. We are just trying to add some Maybe color Maybe that is that. surely shining on films today. Certainly. And the next category is for the best commercial bank of Afghanistan. It goes to none other than Afghan United Bank. Can we please have the Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Deepak Gupta on stage. Congratulations. Dr. Vinay Suri and others please join in giving this award. And the winner of the next category of the most acclaimed CBSE Education Institute in West Delhi 2023, I would like to call upon Bulatele Vidyarathar. We've lost all our school times, but still, let's have the principal, Ms. Sangeeta, and Dr. A.K. Sam, director and principal of Indian School of Excellence, Delhi. Professor Avinash, Dr. Raghavendra, and Dr. Sandeep Chatterjee. Please join. The next award category is of the best cyber security and GIGW testing laboratory award for 2023. And the award goes to TerraSoft Technologies Private Limited. Can we please have Ashutosh, who is the president, and Mr. Sameep Shastri is the Vice President. And this must be given by Dr. Sandeep Chatterjee, Senior Director and Group Coordinator, Cyber Law and Data Governance, Head of Division of E-Waste and Circular Economy, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Is not available? Maybe they are not present amongst us. The right next now. one. So the next category to look out for is the most admirable and innovative pharmaceutical company to watch in 2023 and the award goes to Mr. Raju Darla, who is the director of Darla R Life Sciences and Innovations Private Limited. Can we please have Mr. Raju Darla on stage to collect your award. Congratulations. Round of applause for our winners, please. The next category is of the most renowned brand of the year in Flexible Flow Solution. And the award goes to Business Connect Team. Yusuf Air Kazi, who's the founder, we would like to follow on stage from Aeroflex Industries. Education and the winner is Velour Institute of Technology. May we please have Dr. V. Shridhar Professor. Congratulations. For this category, we found the profile of Dr. V. Shridhar, who is a highly regarded professor at the Lord Institute of Technology for his major contribution to research, teaching, mentorship and influence in this field. Pleasure to have you. The next award category is of the CEO of the year. And the award goes to Mr. Rohan Sharma, CEO of RK Jewelers by Zell Jewelers Limited. Can we please have Mr. Rohan Sharma on stage? 
and I would request His Excellency Mr. Dan Goldamajo, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenty Potentiary of Mongolia to the Republic of India to kindly give this award to the best CEO of the year. So Mr. Rohan Sharma, is it available? We have the beautiful and elegant lady on his behalf collecting this prestigious award. The next category is of the most trusted and innovative company for excellence in prefabricated and wooden construction. And the award goes to the Managing Director of Brissa Innovation Limited, Mr. Sandeep Mahajan. Can we please have him on stage? A round of applause for our winners here today. Ms. Yogita Tulisiani to give this award to this uh, smart person. Next winner in the category of Excellence Award in Commercial Real Estate goes to Mr. Akash Sagar, AGM, Leasing and Business Development from Fellight Developers. Can we please have Mr. Akash Sagar on stage please to receive the honor. award, reward and recognize the best 
industry. And it was a pleasure to have all our winners and of course all our acclaimed guests on stage. And with that, we conclude our award ceremony. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you, Meena. I was blessed to be there, and uh, this is the time to felicitate our experts and guests who are here on the stage. And uh, for this, I would specifically request Ambassador Dr. Jao to kindly felicitate our guests. You would also be felicitated by our other guests. Yeah. So, first of all, Professor Abhinash Chandra Pandey. Professor Abhinash Chandra Pandey. <laughs> This is the director of IUSC, Ministry of Education and Government of India. Requesting a bunch of dancers to the family. Dr. Sandeep Chatterjee, please bring his presentation. Uh, Dr. Sandeep Chatterjee. Thank you. Dr. Sandeep Chatterjee. And then Dr. G. R. Raghavan. Dr. G. R. Raghavan, the next. Mr. Sandeep Chatterjee. Mr. 
समर्थ महापात्र Yes. Mr. B. M. Sala and Mr. B. K. Department. Mr. B. M. Suri. Thank you. 